Hi everyone, it's Christine here from Christine Stampin' Spot. I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator and I am really excited to share with you today this super cute little card using the Animal Outing Bundle from Stampin' Up! Now, the bundle comes with the Animal Outing stamp set and the Coordinating Animal Friends Thin Lit Dies. And if you purchase it together as a bundle, you do save 10%. However, you can purchase these items separately if you prefer. So for example, if you just wanted this, this stamp set, you can buy that by itself if you prefer. I love this stamp set. It is so much fun to work with. And so I'm gonna show you how we created this beautiful little card today. Don't forget, if you are not aware, every Tuesday I post a new online card class that I have that are available to my customers as well as to other demonstrators for a lower price point. And this is the current class that is still open for registration through Monday. So I wanted to get this card up before the class registration closed because I think this is such an adorable stamp set and bundle and I think you guys will really love the cards that I created with the class. So I will have a link in the description box below to the video about this online card class. I will also have a link in the description box of this video below to my blog, which will have all of the measurements for all of the cardstock pieces and for this card, and it will have links to all the products used to create this card. So let's go ahead and get started. For today's card, you will be needing, of course, like I said, the Animal Outing Bundle, and then our colors are Old Olive, basic gray, and lovely lipstick, which I think makes a really great color combination. So let's go ahead and start. The very first thing that we wanna do is get our little rhinoceros here stamped. And then I am going to demonstrate for you how to use our wonderful alcohol markers called our Stampin' Blends to color this guy up. So let's go ahead and get him stamped. You'll just need a piece of Whisper White cardstock. I, you can use either thick Whisper White cardstock or um, regular Whisper White cardstock when you're coloring with the blends. I prefer to use the uh, thick Whisper White cardstock. I feel like I just get better blending with that. So that is what I would definitely recommend that you use. So I'm gonna go ahead, these are red rubber clear mount stamps. You can also get them in wood mount if you prefer the actual wooden blocks. I just prefer being able to stick them on my acrylic block and, and being able to go. Now our stamp and blend are alcohol markers. You can liken them to Copic markers, Tombow markers, and other types of alcohol markers that are on the market. So whenever you are stamping, and you intend to color with alcohol markers, you want to use your Memento Tuxedo Black ink. So first we're gonna get our little Rhino here all nice and inked up with our Memento Tuxedo Black ink. And then we are going to go ahead and stamp this down onto our thick Whisper Weight cardstock. Just go ahead and stamp him down. Voila, such a super cute little rhinoceros. Now I'm gonna clean this stamp off really quick. My stamp and scrub is off camera. Otherwise I forget if I don't. <laughs> and then I'll come back later and my stamp will just take a little longer to clean because I forgot. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring over all the blends that I used and I'm gonna go over the different markers that I used to color this image. If you have been following my blog for any length of time, you know that I love coloring. I love to watercolor and I love to color with alcohol markers. I have used in past videos alcohol markers from all different brands, Copic markers, Tombow markers, and I have to say when I started using the Stampin' Blends, I was, and it's, I'm not exaggerating, I was quite literally giddy with how easy they were to, to use, how lovely they blend together. And again, just how easy they are to use. You don't have numbering system here. You simply look at your markers. You have on the side here, dark smoky slate and light smoky slate. You can buy each marker individually or you can buy the two that go together uh, as a bundle uh, for $9. Or I think individually there's something like $4 or something like that. I can't recall exactly. So we're gonna use the grays, the, the light, smoky slate and the dark smoky slate to color up the rhinoceros. We are going to be using our light lovely lipstick and our dark lovely lipstick to color the little bird. We're going to use our light um, um, pumpkin pie and dark pumpkin pie to color the little bird's beak. We're going to use ivory to color his little, his little horn. 
and then we're going to use light old olive and dark old olive just for a little bit of grass color underneath of our little rhino. The last marker that you're going to need is the color lifter. This is an absolutely essential marker. Um, what it does is it acts just like a colorless blender. If you're familiar with Copic markers, um, this acts just like a colorless blender. So what it does is you can take ink away if you want more of a lighter tone. And I'll show you this in a minute when I actually start coloring. Also, if you color outside the lines, this marker will erase it for you. It's so awesome. So let's go ahead. I'm going to zoom in so you can really see the coloring here. And I'm also not going to edit this video in terms of fast forwarding through this process because I haven't demonstrated on video the blends yet. And so I really want you guys to see how these work. So what I like to do is I like to grab the color that I'm working with. In this case, it's gray and specifically it's smoky slate light and dark smoky slate. And so I know that I want his body to be this dark, this, this gray color, but I want a little bit of variation and, and of course, gradation of light. I want the shadows and I want the lights like we do when we, when we're doing our alcohol marker coloring with any products, with any type of alcohol markers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the little shadows that the stamp illustrator has already provided as my guide. So for example, there's shadows here and here, and of course under his neck and then over here and at the base of his feet and that's where it's going to be darkest I like to start there are different other people do it differently this is just how I do it I like to start with my darker color first and I like to work in smaller sections because I find it's easier to blend if you work in smaller sections because your ink doesn't dry also before we get started with the actual coloring I want to point out there are two different ends to your markers there is this end that has the brush tip and there is this end that has a smaller tip. So you have the ability to get into small spaces. Really, either side will work. I just tend to use the actual brush marker tip. That's what I'm used to working with, and I find it works great for me. So let's go ahead and get started. All I'm going to do, and you can see this on video here, is I am literally just scribbling on some of the dark smoky slate marker where I feel it's going to be darkest. So, of course, under his chin, and we've got some lines here that the illustrator put in for us. So I'm just scribbling some color down. No big deal. As you can see, I'm not doing anything special at all. I'm going to go ahead and close up that marker. I'm now going to grab the light smoky slate. And I am in a circular motion going to blend these colors together. So we will have dark on the outside and this lighter gray kind of coming in to fill up the rest of the little rhino. Now at first it might not look like much and it might look a little choppy, but I'm gonna show you how you can fix that in just a moment. All right, so I'm just in a circular motion kind of going back. I'm going slightly into the dark color, pulling it out and then filling in the rest of the white space that remains with the rest with the light marker, the light sm smoky slate marker. Now you can see there you already have some nice little shadows, right? So we have some darker where I laid down the darker marker definitely stands out. But I feel that it's a little choppy. It is not blended as great as I would like. So I'm going to grab I'm going to do it one more time. I'm just going to repeat the same process. So I'm grabbing my dark smoky slate one more time and I am going to add this dark color again, kind of around his face where underneath his chin and then over here where the artist put in some of those little um, predetermined darker shadows. And then over here down by his feet are some shadows and right here are some shadows. I'm going to color, close this up and as you can see I'm working pretty quickly because the wetter the ink is the easier it is to blend. And now look at how effortless, effortless, effortless oh my goodness, effortlessly <laughs> this is blending. I have no idea why I could not speak that word just then. That was weird. All right, so this is all just blending together beautifully. And you can see there that you now have the shading that you would desire. You can go back and do this multiple times. That's why I like using, one of the reasons why I like using the thick Whisper White. It's gonna bleed through on the back, but we almost always have something behind our images anyway, so that doesn't bother me. And you can add more and more on top of ink on top because the paper's a bit thicker. Now I'm going to do the same thing to the top of the little rhino's head. So there's some shading that, again, that the illustrator has already done inside the ears 
and then up here at the little top of his head, of course, underneath his horns gonna be dark, and then we have some over here as well. So really just kind of look at your stamp after it's been inked and stamped down, and it will give you a lot of pointers on where to put the darker color. Now I'm going to do the same process. I'm just in a circular motion, kind of pulling the dark ink out into the white space. I'm not going all the way back into where the, the dark ink started. I'm just slightly going back to pull the dark ink in so we get a nice blend between the light and dark, and it's not quite so abrupt a transition between the dark and the light. So I'm coming around now and filling in the remainder of the white space. And I'm gonna do the same thing that I did for the bottom of them again. I'm going to go back in with the dark again. I just feel like I get a better blend this way and I get more of a dramatic transition between my darks and my lights, which I really enjoy. So I've done my darks and now I'm gonna come in with the light and just do the same thing. And I find that a circular motion, kind of, I kind of color on the side of the marker. If you notice, I rarely use the point, only when I'm trying to get into a very small space will I use the point of the marker. I find that I just get a better blend using the side of the brush tip of the marker. Okay, so now our little rhino is all finished. Now, purposefully, just a tiny little bit, and it probably won't even be, oops, that's a little blurry, sorry. You probably can't really see it very well, but there's a little tiny bit of ink that went outside of his little paw. That is no, wow, well, do you call a rhino's foot a paw? I'm not even sure. That's no big deal. All you do is you take your color lifter pen, and this is what I was talking about at the beginning of the video. You just simply go over in a circular motion and it removes that ink for you. So that's super, super easy to do. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to work on our little bird. And so for him, I chose to use Lovely Lipstick. So again, I'm gonna start with the dark Lovely Lipstick and just put a little bit of dark down here where there's some shading that the artist already did for us on the stamp. And then I'm gonna put a little tiny bit on the base of the wings and the little tufts of feathers at the top and the back. Now I'm gonna take that light Lovely Lipstick and I'm gonna do the same thing, just sort of pull that light color out and fill in the rest of the white space. Now these are very tiny little images here, um, these, these feathers up here, so I am using the very tip of the marker. You could also turn it over and use that other tip if that's easier for you. I'm just used to working with brush tipped markers, so for me, it wasn't, it's not a big deal. It just takes a lot of practice to be able to get that small um, with, with a brush tip end of your marker, but it is possible. Okay, so, so that's nice and colored. I'm going to take the dark pumpkin pie and just put a little bit of the dark color right at the base of his beak. And then we'll take the light and just blend that out. So there's a little bit of a transition of color there. And finally, we just need to do the uh, ivory on the trunk. So to do that, I'm just going to color it with this ivory marker. Now the ivory doesn't come in a set, it just simply comes, you buy this one by itself. Same with the color lifter marker. But I'm gonna show you how to really use this color lifter now. Now, I've just colored in that horn. But that's a little bit too bright for me. I want it to be a little bit more subtle. So here, this is sort of like magic, I think. You're going to take your color lifter, and you're just going to kind of, in a circular motion, go around and lift some color up. I'm going to turn it this way, just because it's a little easier for me to see. And I'm going to lift some of that color up. And it's not streaky. It's not um, blotchy. It just lifts the color up, so it's now much more subtle. A little uh, kind of ivory colored horn. I think that's so cool. I'm going to take the color lifter one more time and I'm going to, I went out of the lines just a little bit right there and uh, I don't even know if the camera's picking this up but you'll just have to trust me if it's not I promise I would never mislead you. All you have to do is just, if you get some ink out of the lines, you just take the color blender and rub it over that ink and it comes right off. So super cool. The final step in coloring our little rhino here is we're going to put a little bit of green underneath um, and, you know, just say that he's standing on some grass. So I'm going to start with my dark old olive and just put that right under his feet. Certainly he's going to cast a shadow, so that's going to be the darkest. 
And then we'll just come in with some of our light old olive to just sort of blend this out. Again, I'm just coloring on the side of my markers here. Again, I'm gonna do it twice. I just feel like I get a better blend by just going over it one more time and it barely takes any additional time at all and I think the results are much better. So I've done it one more time and now I'm gonna take the light old olive one more time and just blend this out here like so. And there we have it. I forgot to color just the little tip of his tail so I'm just gonna take one gray color. I'm just gonna use the light here. It's really too tiny to get any blending on that tail. So I'm just gonna do that and I messed up a little bit there and I went out of the lines a little bit, no big deal. We're gonna take our color lifter and there we go, all done. So he is all nice and colored up now. The next step, I'm gonna zoom back out now so we can put our card together. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm just gonna put all the stamping blends aside, make sure my lids are on nice and tight. We are all finished with these. So hopefully you guys can see how easy it is to color with these. You don't have to worry about, you know, numbers and what colors go together. You just look at the names and you're good to go. And what a pretty result, right? So the next thing that we would do is we would go ahead and line up from the die set that coordinates with the stamp set. We would just simply line this up and run it through our big shot to cut this out now don't get confused when i first lined this up it looked like it was going to cut the bird out funky but it's not it's absolutely not just make sure that you line up around the rhino and that you have this little space right here in between the horn and the ear and it's going to come out perfectly now to save time so i didn't have to drag the big shot out for the video i have gone ahead and cut colored and cut one out that i did prior to coming on camera so here's another one that I have done and I went ahead and cut him out with the coordinating dies. Look how beautifully this cuts out, by the way. I love how it has that space there. Uh, it just is beautiful, I think. I love it, love it, love it. So anyway, this little guy's already cut out. So let's go ahead and put the finished card together. Let's bring that card back over so we can kind of see where we're going. So what we're gonna do first is we're going to take a lovely lipstick piece of cardstock and we're going to make a card base. And now what I did is I simply cut it at uh, an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. I cut it down the middle at four and a quarter, and then I scored it at five and a half. And that gave me this top folding note card. I already went ahead and put some Whisper White card stuck on the inside because it's a really dark color. So you'll want to have something that you can write your message on. So I went ahead and put the Whisper White on the inside. So the next thing that we're going to do as we're going to go ahead, I have a strip here of old olive um, cardstock, and I have this piece of gray designer series paper that comes from the Animal Outing Coordinating Designer Series paper stack. And let me just quickly show you. I've used a lot of this paper in, in creating my class, but I do have quite a bit that I can show you very quickly. So you can just sort of get an idea of how cute this paper is. And a lot of this paper will be available in the class, in your class packets for free as well. So you have the cute little um, animals, papers, and you have some leaves on this side here. And I'm dropping it. This is the gray paper just really cute kind of this would make a great great paper also for scrapbooking maybe a zoo visit or something really pretty so anyway we are just simply using a gray piece from uh, this designer series stack that I thought was really pretty and we are going to adhere this little strip of our old olive cardstock a little ways up from the bottom of the paper so just go ahead and grab your regular snail adhesive Put some adhesive on the back of this piece of old olive cardstock, and we'll just go ahead and adhere this to the bottom portion. Not flush with the bottom, just a little tiny bit, maybe a quarter of an inch up from the bottom. Now I took a piece of this fun burlap ribbon that we carry in the catalog, and I just kind of laid it across here and cut it so there was a little bit on each end. So I'm gonna cut it about here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go ahead and turn this cardstock over. Look at the cute hippo on the, <laughs> the reverse side of the designer series paper, it's so cute. 
So I put some adhesive down on both of uh, the long sides of this piece of designer series paper. And I'm going to fold one end of the burlap down. And now I'm gonna turn it back over just to make sure I have it where I want it. And then I'm going to put it down on the other side. And you can fiddle with it, of course, and uh, then once you get it where you want it, because this burlap is a bit thicker, I recommend grabbing some scotch tape as well and just taping the back. This will ensure that this doesn't go anywhere, um, that this burlap will stay perfectly in place for you. Okay, now we just need to fill in the rest of this piece of designer series paper with our adhesive, just our regular snail adhesive and we can go ahead and mount this to our lovely lipstick card base. So we'll just wanna center this to the bottom of our card base here. All right, that looks good. Okay, the next thing that we're going to do is I took two sizes of circle stitched dies from our stitched shapes framelit dies and I simply put them down like this on my cutting plate on top of my paper and ran it through twice once with basic gray cardstock and once with old olive and I get these two cut out pieces and as you can see you have that really pretty stitching on it but they're open on the inside by doing it this way and then i ran just the large one through with some lovely lipstick to get this main circle and this is how we're going to create the fun little look here on the front of our card base so what i did first is i laid my old olive one down first and you can use really any adhesive to do this. I am going to be using the fine tip glue pen from Stampin' Up because I just, it's awesome, number one. And number two, it really does just put a little bit of glue out, which is all I need. I don't need, you know, a whole bunch of glue coming out. I just need a tiny little bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to turn it over and just slightly squeeze the glue so a little bit comes out here. And can you see just how fine the line is? This glue, I don't know if that's going to pick up, but this glue is really, really perfect for especially smaller um, embellishments and things that you're adding to your projects. It's really great. So we're just going to stick that down like so. And then we're going to take the gray and we're going to do the same thing. And we're just going to kind of overlap them a little bit like so about there. No right or wrong, just wherever you want to place them. I'm going to stick a, a acrylic block over this quickly here. It just helps that glue stick to the paper and dry a little, you know, and stick a little bit faster. So I tend to put heavier little acrylic blocks on top for just a moment. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the circle that I cut out of the uh, lovely lipstick circle and I'm going to grab some dimensionals and stick those on the back of the circle. Peel them off, the backings. Now this is all nice and stuck down so we can remove our acrylic blocks here. And we're just gonna stick this, oh, about here, like so. And just stick that down, it's got that little bit of pop to it from the dimensionals. We're gonna take our little rhino that we've colored with our blends, we're gonna turn him over, and we're gonna put some dimensionals on the back of him as well. So we're just gonna put some normal size dimensionals back here, and then I want a small little mini dimensional. These are so great, these mini dimensionals. Um, on the up here um, underneath the bird so that we have even coverage of, of dimensionals on the back of this image. We're going to go ahead and peel off the backings from this as well. Okay. And we will stick him down on our lovely lipstick circle. Okay. Now in the die set we have a really fine little leafy image that we can cut out and it looks like this when it has been cut out. So I cut three of these out of old olive cardstock and I'm going to go ahead and again use this fine tip glue pen just to put some glue on the back of this little 
branchy element here. And I'm going to stick one here, like so. I'm gonna grab an acrylic block, let that sit on top of that. I'm going to take a second one. And again, I pre-cut these before coming on camera just to save some time. So I'm gonna take this one and we're gonna go ahead and put some glue on the back of this one as well. Again, you can use any adhesive you want. I just find this uh, fine tip glue pen really easy to work with. I'm gonna put this one here, kind of coming down from the top. I'm gonna grab another acrylic block just to set on top to let that stick to the paper so it dries nice for us. And then I'm gonna take my final one and I'm gonna do the same thing, turn it over on the back, grab the fine tip glue, put just a little bit of glue along the back here and then we will simply remove these acrylic blocks and we're going to stick this one about here and then I'll stick a block down on it to, to let it dry for a moment. Now when you're closing up your fine tip glue pen, this is the cap. I don't know if you can see that. There's like a almost like a needle looking thing inside the cap. You want to make sure that that goes down inside the tip of your glue and then uh, turn it closed and that keeps the tip unclogged. Really cool design and it works really well too. The next thing that we want to do is we want to go ahead and add our sentiment and I use the thank you big time sentiment from the stamp set to save time because I knew this video would be a little long because I was doing the, um, the coloring. Um, I thought I'd go ahead and just stamp it down and mount it. So I stamped it on some basic gray cardstock with some lovely lipstick ink and then I mounted it with some lovely lipstick cardstock behind it. I'm going to grab some dimensionals and I'm just going to stick them towards the bottom here of this uh, cardstock sentiment panel and we're just going to stick this right down here. And then Finally, first of all, I think I, I feel like I need one more dimensional here at the bottom of my circle. I don't think I put one good enough at the bottom, so I'm going to fix that. I think my circle will stick better. Yep, that, that's what it needed. And then the final touch is I simply added some silver pearls. These are from the Metallic Pearl Collection. I thought the silver went really pretty with the gray colors we have throughout the card color scheme. So I just added five of these. There's no right or wrong placement for these. You just place them wherever you like. And I just added five and there you go. That is our finished little card. I think it is so cute and really let me sort of demonstrate for you guys how easy these blends are to use. So this is the one on the left that I just made for you and this is the one that I made prior to coming on camera and I just think they're absolutely adorable. And of course, this is the little guy that I colored for you live. He's so cute and these blends are so easy to use. I really think you guys will like them. Don't forget to check out the video that I will link below regarding the card, online card class that I'm having with this bundle and also uh, check out my blog, which I will also link below for measurements and links to all the products used. Thank you guys so much as always for stopping by and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.